All right, so this is the meeting of the Waitley Conservation Commission on May 15th, 2024. And first item of business is uh, the request for determination of applicability submitted by the town of Waitley with represented by Berkshire Design Group. And uh, the site visit for this project was conducted on Monday evening. And uh, at this point, Liam, I'll <clears throat> yield the floor to you to uh, present the project. <laughs> and if you'd like to uh, share the screen, I can make you a co-presenter. Okay, yeah, that would be great. All right. Already. All right. Co-host, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. One second. All right, so I'm gonna start off by showing, um, I know the commissioners are all aware where Egypt Road is, but just to reiterate, Egypt Road is in Southern Waitley, to the east of Route 91, um, connects Route 5 here uh, to Long Plain Road on the east. Um, and the location that we are talking about for the proposed water main Lies just to the west of the railroad that runs north south through Waitley and connects over uh, to what is about 27 Egypt Road, is this house here. Um, and before I get into our state plan, just note uh, that we are aware that there are wetlands to both the north and south of Egypt Road. Um, but as we've discussed, uh, they have not been delineated. But we have called in um, wetland outlines from MassDEP, from the MassGIS website, just to show them um, for completeness and to have something to show. Um, so now I'm going to open up our site plan. Um, and I'm happy to go through any information on this plan with you. Um, Lucy, obviously, is here as well, can help answer any questions um, that you may have as we go through. Um, but here, I'm going to jump right away to uh, C100, our overall site plan, um, a little bit of disturbance here. Um, so as I mentioned, these are the, uh, the, the hatches here with kind of the grass logos, as well as the small little honeycomb hatch are the wetlands that we pulled from MassDEP and the MassGIS website. Um, and then we offset those with a 100-foot buffer just to kind of show approximate locations of where buffers may be. Uh, the other hatch shown on this screen is our uh, limit of disturbance, which is the gray hatch here outlined in the dashed line. This shows uh, the utility trench that will be excavated um, to place the water line on the west side here uh, over to the east. This is the railway here. So we're talking, you know, just to the west of the railway over to the east end, which is around that 27 uh, Egypt Road here. Um, yeah, so the utility trench that we're showing currently is a four foot wide trench, which is what we would expect the contractor to excavate, um, with the exception, obviously, of these larger areas here to the west and east of the railway, which are the locations for the um, trenchless micro tunneling that mass DOT will require us to do to cross the railroad. So that's just to get the big enough to get the equipment in to, to do that micro tunneling. Um, and as you can see, uh, the vast majority of the projects of the our limit disturbance lies within the Egypt Road right of way, uh, with the small exception of just the residential um, domestic service that is going to go down here to 16 Egypt Road, um, as well as there's a fire hydrant that will likely be right on the property line of 16 Egypt Road, but we're showing a little bit extra here just to posterity stake. Um, and finally, just want to reiterate that all of this work that we're showing lies within either the gravel or bituminous asphalt pavement surfaces. Um, and so being under those surfaces and being a new water uh, utility project, we feel that the wet, it would be exempt from the Wetlands Protection Act, but we're requesting for your determination on that fact. 
Um, with all that being said, um, I think I'm happy to open it up to any questions um, specifically that, that you may have. Okay, thank you, Liam. Um, the members of the commission, does anybody have any questions or comments? Nothing for me. I'm all set as well. Yeah, I don't have any questions. Hey, George. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. No questions. Okay. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't necessarily have any questions. We saw the site, and it's pretty straightforward. I just want to review for those people that might be watching the recording that uh, when we talked about uh, an exemption for this, we're talking about a regulatory exemption, which means that it's due to language included in the Wetlands Protection Act regulations. And it has to do with um, activities within the buffer zone and in specifically what are defined as minor activities. And so there's a whole list of minor activities, one of which is installation of underground utilities, for example, electric gas water within existing paved or unpaved roadways and private driveways or roadways, provided that provided that all work is conducted within the roadway or driveway and that all trenches are closed at the completion of each workday. And then uh, the more general language is that these, these activities within the buffer zone and outside resource areas are not otherwise subject to regulation under the Wetlands Protection Act, provided that the work is performed solely within the buffer zone as prescribed uh, in a manner so as to reduce the potential for any adverse effects or impacts to the resource area during construction and with post-construction measures implemented to stabilize any disturbed areas. Um, and then it has some factors to be considered. So based on your presentation, it appears to qualify for this exemption. I just want you to confirm for us that you know, all activity will be taking place within the roadway, which you just said. Uh, but it's also you're going to take steps to make sure that there's no uh, adverse impacts to resource areas. Can you tell us what those steps are? Um, so I can show, um, go into our more detailed site plan. But we have, let's show it in one second, but we have erosion control barriers uh, that will be set up prior to any start of construction. It'll be the first step. Um, along any downslope locations around all of this work to protect uh, sediment migration, stormwater runoff uh, throughout the site. And so I can just go to our next more detailed pages and that erosion control barrier that I was talking about is called out here. It is this line that has another dash in it. Um, and we are showing that throughout this location it wraps around through here this is down slope of this location and then there's no trenches through the micro tunneling underneath the railway uh, and then on the other side of the railway picks up again the erosion control as shown again uh, allowing for uh, space access site access here um, and then picking up again on the down slope and it continues on to, this is the match line from where we just ended. Uh, that erosion control continues along uh, the downslope throughout the project location, including on the north slope over here as well. Okay. And are there any post-construction measures needed to stabilize disturbed areas after you're done? So all disturbed areas will return to their existing condition. Um, and we provide details on our detail sheet here for when it is in a pavement, we have this uh, asphalt bituminous concrete pavement patch detail, uh, which will 
show how the contractor will return that surface to the existing condition. And then we also have gravel roadway detail here, um, which the contractor will return that area to this cross section. And then also the specific condition related to this minor project is uh, not only is the work conducted within the roadway, but that all trenches are closed at the completion of each workday. So can you confirm that that's the work plan? That is the work plan. And uh, included, we have this site notes um, sheet, which has a bunch of uh, notes on here and included in uh, the maintenance and protection of traffic notes. Uh, note three here talks about um, that the contractor is responsible for communications with homeowners when access to their driveway will be obstructed um, and access shall be restored at the end of every day. That includes uh, throughout the project. And we, we can expand upon that as well uh, to make it a little bit more clear. There's also um, note five, there's no stockpiling of materials allowed. And so um, the the way that this is normally done is after each length of pipe is installed, they backfill and then they move along. They don't leave the trench open um, for multiple lengths of pipe. So they continually fill the trench back up. The one question that came up during the site visit that I'll repeat now was that, you know, as described here, it does appear that all the work would be within the roadway and therefore this does appear to qualify for that regulatory exemption. However, if we get another rainy season and groundwater levels rise uh, and, you, and if you should run into groundwater when you trench for the pipe, I it's I guess my opinion that any dewatering activities would no longer qualify you for the minor minor projects exemption because of the discharge of that water would be outside of the roadway. Um, so um, I think that's just sort of a I guess we can discuss that or debate that. Um, the idea would be that as long as you're not dewatering or doing anything else that's outside of the roadway, the exemption would hold. But if you did encounter dewatering, then you would need some kind of authorization from us, either an RDA, uh, a, a negative determination of applicability or or um, an order of conditions. And then we raised the possibility that you could um, you know, proceed, but then at the same time uh, file a contingency plan for dewatering so that if you ran into that, you would have prior approval to go ahead and do the dewatering and continue with the work uninterrupted. Now, it may be that this, the, the, the site is high enough above water table for the entire length or that the water table is low enough at this point and will remain low enough that none of that will be an issue. But I just raise it and um, feel free to respond. Lucy, do you want to talk about that? I know you had mentioned that earlier. Um, sure, we we did talk about this, uh, Scott, um, in the office and with with Chris also, and um, we do have notes on the plan uh, regarding if uh, what to do if if dewatering is required. We also have it's more detailed in the specification, um, and our our note says all dewatering. Um, sorry, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All dewatering discharges shall be directed to a dewatering sediment trap. Well, in this case, of course, it would be uh, a, a filter bag, and and we would we would we could expand on this, or we would expect that the contractor would put the would place the bag at a location where, as the water seeped out, it wouldn't cause uh, issues with with um, reeling and and erosion. Um, which I I I see what you mean, Scott. That that wouldn't be on the road. That would be off the road, but it could still be in the in the town right of way. But it would need to be in a a vegetated area that wouldn't um, that wouldn't um, 
change this they would where it would and also not a steep area so where it would function properly and do its job um so uh i looked at the soils along along this whole run and um uh i i don't think we came to any conclusion about whether dewatering would be would be probable or not probable um so that that is why we usually I have that contingency that the contractor is to do that correctly um, by 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 uh, so that there's no sedimentation leaving the site. Um, is is there is there a way to um, to put a condition on on on? Um, I'm I'm not that familiar with um, all the ways to to permit to to do an RDA is there a way to permit to condition an RDA or um yeah so that's that's what occurred to me also is that uh you know the the RDA is to determine whether this is this is an exempt activity so ordinarily if something's exempt it's exempt and so there are no requirements as long as you don't violate the exemption mm -hmm. um but in this case i think it would probably be appropriate to uh, issue a, de a determination that says that the activity as defined uh, with is exempt. However, if with a condition that says, however, if dewatering is required, then prior approval from the Conservation Commission is needed. And, and that could be, you know, as long as the rest of the commission agrees, it could be contacting me as the chair and having me go out and just verify that the, where you're going to locate the filter bag seems like an appropriate spot, and then you could get immediate authorization to proceed. So it would be essentially reviewed tonight with a conditional, um, you know, requirement that if if you need to be dewatered, you need to just check with us so that we can verify that the location of the of the discharge is appropriate. Okay. Yeah, I I see that there it might be several places too that they need to depending on where where the problem occurs. Uh, there might be a few locations where they need to discharge, but that sounds uh, very reasonable. I just had time to glance at the report that came out this morning, um, and it it has a lot of uh, a lot of detail about the pits. Um, and uh, hitting groundwater at eight and a half feet in uh, December when the borings were done. Um, and the an anticipating going down to 14 feet for the pits. And there's quite a bit in that. I, I didn't have time to finish the report. There's a fair bit in there about the concerns around dewatering the pits and the, uh, the soil types and the potential for piping a lot of sediment out. The, um, do you want to go to the profile, Liam? Sure. Yeah, so they did one boring in, on each side of the railroad right. as a requirement for that crossing. And right. uh, yes, they, they I think they say uh, groundwater eight to nine and a half feet mm -hmm. um, at the time of the boring. So, um, so there is a contingency for dewatering there as well. Um, And the soils are uh, fine, fine right. to medium sand with some right. with some silt. Right. Are those bar those pits? Um, are they within the buffer zone? The location of those on here, I'm not sure where. <laughs> Should you go back to the DEP, even though we don't think it's very, it's quite correct. We don't think it is. I think these, based off of what, of these outlines, which we do not think are very accurate, at least this pit is outside of the buffer zone. Um, I think this is showing that this is a wetland here, but fairly certain that this area is pretty cleared out for this um, house that is here. It could be wrong. Um, so these 
might be upside, but I mean, we, these are not delineated wetlands. So I don't know. If, I don't think we could say for a hundred percent sure that that is right. the case. Yeah. Well, I think we could probably still cover that with the condition so mm -hmm. that if you find that you've got groundwater, you know, we can make sure that the discharge is in an appropriate place. Um, mm -hmm. uh, commissioners, do you have any questions or comments about what we've talked about and what I suggested as a possibility? Yeah, that makes sense to approve the project with a special condition about the dewatering. I think that makes sense to me. I agree as well. Yeah. Yep. Same here. Um, and then uh, Liam, you know, Chris, any of you, Lucy, do any of you have um, any further comments about what we're talking about? I do not. Uh, nope. I, and I would have joined at seven, but I was over at the Amherst Planning Board, so I'm just here to listen in. No problem. All right, are there any other issues that we need to discuss with regard to this project? All right. Um, if you could stop sharing your screen, Liam, we'll, we'll then take a vote. So uh, the proposal before us now is, is that we issue a negative determination of applicability due to this being uh, a minor activity as defined under the regulations with the single condition that if any dewatering is required that there be prior approval from the commission uh, prior to that activity taking place. And um, if we, I guess I would add to that um a vote ask for a vote to designate me the authority to approve that dewatering uh if it should come up anybody want to modify that or have any concerns about that plan no no sounds good yep all right so all in favor say aye aye, aye. all right that's unanimous, no one's opposed. So um, we will prepare the paperwork, then I have to leave it at the town offices for people to sign. And then I'll basically, um, should I leave it for the water department or should I should I leave the original to the water department and, and email you a copy or how should we handle the uh, the paperwork? I think I'd rather have it. <laughs> The original yeah okay um so it may take a few days in order to get all the signatures and get it to you know the, the post office to get it sent out certified mail um it doesn't seem like you're in a hurry to start and you know right away so um if, if that's acceptable to you i think we're all set that's acceptable to us yeah yeah Thank you. Yes, we're and and uh, I guess we should have mentioned that the project probably will not occur till uh, some next year. They they're looking for funding for it. Okay. So so uh, so that that's perfect. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for coming in and for preparing and uh, and giving a nice presentation. And uh, if anything comes up, feel free to contact me if you have questions. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Um, thank you. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. All right. I think that's the first meaningful item of business we've had entire this entire year so far, isn't it? Yeah. Our <laughs> central project. Yeah. Um. All right. So uh, minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume you all got a chance to read the minutes and study them carefully. Did Did you find any errors or? Or things that should perfect. be added. Um, very comprehensive. Yeah. yeah, comprehensive. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um and in terms of uh updates, the only thing I have is is that we received two more cutting plans for harvest work off of Grass Hill Road. Uh, in the property owned by the New England Forestry Foundation. So 
uh, the, everything looked in order and uh, those cutting plans were approved uh, by DCR. And uh, that's all the news I have. Um, uh, yeah, I already talked about the railroads being sprayed. That was at a previous meeting. So there's been nothing much for mail uh, to speak of. So any of you have any other business or updates? Do you want me to talk about that uh, site on um, Pine Plains Estate, Scott? I looked at yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know if people want to review about this this about this site or whatever. You don't know, want to explain it to them. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, like I said, this there's a on a corner lot of uh, Pine Plains Estate. There was Scott had me look at it because it was the lot was completely cleared to the. Um, edge of the lot there is there was silt fence to the edge and when i went monday i saw that there was a secondary uh fence put up and i could see there was some pink flaggings between the two fences so it's like there's a silt fence at the property line some wetland flagging and then like 25 to 50 feet in front of that there's another silt fence so it looks like somebody had had re you know, you know uh re demarcated it but they're still gonna have to come back to us to you know, vegetate the wetland area, I would think. Yeah, so that was uh, the project that J.D. Ross had uh, contacted us about, you know, whether they could start work last year. And I said, you have to be, you know, you have to be at least 100 feet away to start work without any, you know, filing with us. And they started clearing before they got somebody out there to delineate the wetland and I think if I remember right, they not only went up to the edge of the wetland, they actually went into the wetland a small yeah, distance. Yeah. yeah, they went completely to the whatever the lot boundary is there is it's completely cleared. So yeah. From what I could see, there was like a I could see from the back eastern part of it, there's like maybe 20 to 30 feet. There is some like pink floggings that look like it was demarcated as a wetland edge or something. So I think mm -hmm. that was you know, that was what was cleared. So, so I'll I'll send a, an email to JD and ask him to come into our next meeting and see if we can get this resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, so it may be that there'll be a site visit before that so that we are all familiar with what the site looks like before we talk about it next month. Mm -hmm. Scott, did the uh, cutting plans for, for Grass Hill Road come in electronically? Um. They, no, they came in uh, physically, um, and then the the approved ones came in electronically once DCR approved it. Mm -hmm. So it was in my mail in our mailbox. If you have electronic copies, could you forward those? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks. Does everybody want them? I'm all set. No thanks. I'm all set. That abuts my neighbor's property. So, like, yeah, no, I'm happy to send them to you. Okay. Any other business? No. Nope. No business, but my daughter Blythe is going to have a baby any day now. Ooh. Oh, wow. Congrats. Congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, I'm just that... waiting for the word. <laughs> the first one for Blythe? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my fourth grandchild, but first one for her. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. Keeping the keeping a surprise what it'll be. Uh, when is the due date? Uh, ah, yeah. nice. nice. Her due date is May twenty fifth. May twenty fifth. Okay, so it is close. close. Well, congratulations, Monty. It sounds great. Yeah. Thanks. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming out this evening. We had a nice long meeting for a change, and uh, we'll see what comes in between now and June. Uh, but. Uh, Anyway, be well, and we'll see you next month. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Uh, Take bye. care.